千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. 四书五经 ，four books and five classics. As you can see, the picture that I have here, the photo, has a whole bunch of books laid out. So if you count them up, you will see nine books. So the four books and five classics add up to a total of nine. So this is a relatively recent printing of what those are. Now, of course, these titles that you see, these covers, they don't really mean anything to you. All you can note, you know, not knowing Mandarin, is that all of these books have names that are two characters, right? So I'm about to explain what they are. So I want to break it down into two parts: 四书 the four books, being part one; 八经 the 五经 the five classics, being part two. So let's start with part one: the four books. What are they? The first one that I'll talk about is going to be the important one for us. It's called 大学 Great Learning. If you take a look at the photo, you'll see that it's right in the middle. And let me note that these books are laid out not in a specific order because the four books and five classics are considered to be one big thing. That is, these are the nine books that are important to the ancient scholars、uh, ever since about 2,000 years ago. So there's also Doctrine of the Mean. Now, great learning is about a collection of sayings and speeches from Confucius and、uh, his students. Conversations. So the the idea about great learning、uh, is that it's a gateway of learning about Confucian teachings. It expresses many themes. Of ancient Chinese philosophy and thinking, and therefore it has become very influential, influential in multiple aspects, in governing, in self-cultivation, in pretty much everything else. And what about doctrine of the mean? Well, most of、uh, what I what I will be listing for everyone is the、um, official translation for these works. Uh, they're not necessarily great translations, just like you know the Sun Tzu Ancient Art of War. That's actually a very poor translation. So the quality of these English names varies, but they are the official established names. So I have to use them. Doctrine of the Mean. This is really talking about moderation. 
it focuses on the way, the way to gain perfect virtue, which is what 38 is going to be about as well. So moderation is an important aspect of it, and it's talked about in this particular book. Then we have analogs. Oh, and by the way, you can you can see Zhong Yong as the as this one here, the second one from the left, and then Luan Yu, Analex. This is perhaps the well-known book, a compilation of speeches by Confucius, uh, his disciples, uh, as well as the discussions that they held, the conversations they had. So this is uh, more well known than the rest, and it represents um, a lot of what we know about the thinking and teachings of Confucius. It's actually, and because it is so well known in the West, it's actually possible to get decent translations for the analyx for anyone who may be interested in getting into it. Uh, one benefit, uh, if you should ever get into Luan Yu, one benefit is that you begin to get a sense, a get a feeling for what Confucius actually said. Same thing with studying the Tao Te Ching. You get a sense for the style of uh, the thinking of Lao Tzu, the way that he spoke, the way that he wrote. Uh, the benefit to me is that when you see quotes on the internet, about something being said by Confucius or Lao Tzu, you will be able to tell when it sounds incorrect, when it sounds false. Without memorizing everything, you can uh, quickly get a feeling that, nope, Lao Tzu never said that, Confucius never said that. That is not the kind of thing that they would say. They had a, you know, they, cer they certainly lived in a very different world uh, 2,500 years ago, and they thought in different ways than modern times. Let's continue. We've uh, talked about three books. Let's, uh, uh, let's complete the discussion of the four books with the fourth, Mengzi. It's translated as Mencius, just like Kongzi, Confucius, uh, translated as Confucius. Mencius is the other sage. He came after the time of Confucius. He's considered one of the great sages as well. And so, his uh, conversations uh, with the various kings of his time have been recorded. So the difference between the uh, recording of what Confucius said, you can definitely get a sense what the different personalities that these ancient sages had. So with Confucius, usually what he said were things that were short and self-contained. And this was because he was a student of the original Tao, and he had the same or similar style for brevity and conciseness as his master, Lao Tzu. Meng Tzu, on the other hand, this other sage, tended to have long dialogues and extensive prose. So nothing good or bad about that. There's no better or worse, just a different personality. Now let's talk about the five classics. Wu Jing. So the five classics, that's a literal translation. Wu means five, Jing means classics. Same with uh, Si Shu, that's four books, literally. So the five classics, the first one is called the classic of poetry, Shi Jing. So the two characters, the first one is poetry or poems, and the second one is classic. So you could uh, legitimately translate that as poetry classic, the poetry classic, but the official translation is classical poetry. And when you reference back to the photograph, you'll see that it's the third book from the right. You can compare, that's the first character, second character here in the book uh, covers, the characters are, are uh, vertically uh, arranged, but they are the same characters, as you can see. Then 
we have the book of documents and here you can scan through and then you will see that it's actually the third from the left so the book the book of documents is simply a collection of documents and speeches um, that supposedly came from rulers and officials uh, from ancient China. So it may, uh, it probably does date from a time that was even before Laozi. And then after the this particular collection, we have another collection this time of rights, and you can sort of see a theme that the classical poetry itself is a collection of poems. Uh, there's roughly, there's 305 uh, works of poetry collected there. Book of documents, a collection of documents, book of rites, collection of rituals, ceremonies. And looking at the photo, you'll see it as the second from the right. And then Zhou Yi, this is the fourth from the right. It's the Book of Changes. It's actually Yi Jing, Zhou Yi, because it's from the Zhou Dynasty. So it's a different name for a book that you know under a different guise. So Yi Jing, probably we don't need to talk too much about that. Many people still use it for divination today. Uh, the, the, the translations that I have seen out there don't really capture the original. The original was meant to describe the patterns found in nature, found in reality. So by mastering those patterns, you don't actually need to do divination at all. You can simply observe the world, figure out, figure out what the patterns are you are currently in the middle of, and then use the, the ideas that you see in these books, especially the I Ching, to help you figure out what to do. So I think, I think the real lessons of this particular book is extremely useful, and people are only tapping into a small fraction of its true power. So one day, I hope to be able to delve deeper into the book of changes, I Ching, and then uh, create, you know, what I feel is a, is an accurate translation that specifically will stress the importance of understanding life patterns. Lastly, we have a historical uh, document called the Spring and Autumn Annals, Sun Xiu. It's the first book to the right, the rightmost book in the photo that you see there. So these books each have their own use in ancient times. Scholars and students used to commit uh, the vast majority of them or even all of them, all of the contents to memory. Today, that's rarely done, if ever. There are just uh, too much and there's so much going on in modern times that people don't really have the time for that. However, I think that by knowing a few things about it, it can be very useful, as I will demonstrate today by taking everyone into five lines from the great learning and then uh, talk about why that's important. Occasionally, I get the question, uh, Derek, what about the Taoist canon? The Taoist canon is a collection of roughly 1,400 texts. So that is the one thing that I haven't delved into or talked about very much. And it is because when I go, when I study and then explain these ancient works, it is mostly on the basis of practical considerations. The question that I always ask is, is this useful? Can we use this in our lives today? So in many cases, the answer is yes. And even, for instance, learning about history in the spring autumn annals can give you insights on what's happening today because historical patterns 
recur. That is, they happen over and over again. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So it can be practical to study that. Now, you and I live in the, the age of the internet. There's also a thousand other things we could be getting into. So the practical considerations have to compete with many other sources of information that we also have. So I would only, I would only sift through the ancient classics and bring out the things that I think we can immediately apply and put to work for our own benefit. So for those of you who are extremely motivated and if you wish to study, the four books and five classics are a very good place to begin. There's a huge amount. There's a huge amount of study to be done though. So you wanna brace yourself. And I would definitely recommend the four books and five classics I will put them way before the Taoist canon of some 1400 texts. Now, I'm going to take you into the one of them, just one, the great learning, Da Xue. So, this is from the four books, as you saw in the previous slide. This particular book was chosen during the Song Dynasty. Now, you can see the historical period there. So you can pin that as being approximately like a thousand years ago. And this was chosen as one of the primary texts of Confucian teachings. And you will see, by the way, today, when we talk about 38, that there is a close connection between Confucianism and Taoism, Confucian teachings and Tao philosophy. This is because Confucianism had its origins in the Tao. Everything that Confucius talked about was rooted in the Tao. This is why many of the concepts in these works, including Da Xue, Great Learning, mirror what you and I have been discussing, especially in 37. So I put the pinyin next to the Da Xue, the characters here. So Da. DA, I think that's that's easy. Xu, the X is actually like SH. So Da Xu. In modern Mandarin, when you say Da Xu, usually people assume that you mean the other Da Xu. That is, these are the same two characters that is used in modern Mandarin for university. So if you are about to attend university or know someone who is, uh, when you refer to a university, those are actually the characters that you would use, and they sound exactly the same. Da Xue. Rarely do people actually refer to this book, Da Xue, which means great learning. All right, so let's get to the important point. Let's get to the part in Da Xue that has special relevance to us. Let me show you five lines from there and then translate it for you. The five lines, I would show them to you all at once and then I'll, I'll translate them for you one at a time. Okay, so the first line says, knowing to stop and then have steadiness. So the knowing to stop is the first two characters there and then the second set of two characters and then the last two, uh, the last set of two characters, yo ding. So ding, you saw before as steadiness, yo just means to have. So knowing to stop and then have steadiness. I'll explain in detail what these lines all mean. It's part of a recipe, as you will see. Okay, what's next? Line two steady and then able to quiet down. So this is a sequence that we're talking about now. First you stop to steady yourself, to center yourself. And then once you have that steadiness, you're able to quiet down mentally. That makes sense. Line three, quiet and then able to be peaceful. That makes sense too, 
So quiet, that's the first character that you see here. You see that it's the, the first character in line three is the last character of line two. It's, it's a continuation. And then the second character is the end, the A and D. The third character is the then, the T-H-E-N here. Able to is the fourth character. An means peaceful, like ping an. So when you quiet down, you can have peace of mind. I think that makes sense uh, for everyone. That is how we experience peace of mind. We have to first quiet down, then we gain that peace of mind. So we've all, we all know that firsthand. We all have firsthand knowledge, you know, how that works. Then line four, peaceful, and then able to think deeply. So you, I think you can see a pattern here. In line one, you got steadiness that goes into steady. This reflects how the last character of line one is the same as the first character of line two. Then quiet down, and then line three starts with quiet. You see that's exactly how it is in the original Chinese characters. Then in this line that we're looking at, the end of uh, the last line, peaceful, goes into peaceful here, and then able to, and then the last character here is to think deeply, to reflect, to contemplate. So these would all be legitimate translations of that character. Then you see the this contemplation, thinking deeply, reflection character is repeated as the first character of the last line. So the last line is thinking deeply and then able to attain. So it is not specific as to what the attainment is. That's the last character here, and that is by design. Here, what we're talking about is the attainment of whatever goal you have set for yourself. It could be something that is tied to the material world, it could also be something that's tied to the spiritual realm. Whatever goal that may be, in order to attain that, you must follow these five steps. That's what it's saying. So I call it a recipe. It's a recipe for successful attainment. Attainment of what? Whatever you want. So this is the useful aspect of it. This is very good to keep in mind when you are trying to accomplish something, when there's something that you want to do, there's some characteristic that you want to have for yourself, that you want to cultivate within yourself, whatever it can be, these are the five steps. So this applies to leadership and living one's life. So not just for yourself, not just improving aspects of yourself, but also you want to think about these five steps when you're planning something out for a group or leading a team. The example that I used last time was in a sports scenario, a coaching situation. It could just as well be something at work or in the community. And finally, my last comment on this particular set of five lines is that here we have something that reiterates and amplifies the final message of Dr. Jing 37. So that's why I wanted to bring to your attention and I want to see, I want to see if we can illustrate how the connection works, how the mapping works from one to the other. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.